Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series in quantum statistics. This is lecture number 14, and we're going to do the multiplicity function for fermions. In the previous video, we did the multiplicity function for bosons. So let's just do a bit of recap. When we had classical particles, the macroscopic multiplicity, the maximum macroscopic multiplicity was n factorial. However, we found that for every n sub s particles that we picked, we could choose them in different ways. And uh, you know, one we could choose that that way, or three, two, one. We could choose them in different ways, and yet get the same state. So what we had to do is we had to divide by these n sub s factorials. That was the macroscopic description. But when we looked then at bosons, which were identical, so this is boson. So the macroscopic description. Well, there's only one way of choosing n particles. You either you either put them in, you either choose them or you don't choose them. So there's only one way. So that that n factorial becomes one, and well, this for the same reason, the pi n sub s factorials also becomes one. Therefore, the macroscopic description for bosons is one. So the next thing we had to look at was what is the microscopic description. Well, for classical particles, we found that we had to multiply by a factor of g sub s to the power of n sub s for every state, and we got that. And for bosons, we found that we had, we had a pretty complicated um, we had a pretty complicated ex expression that looked something like this. Um, it had something like this. It looked something like that. We'll say yeah, that in actual fact, it looked exactly like that. What happens with fermions? Now, what's the difference between fermions and bosons? The answer is that they are interacting particles. So only one particle can occupy each state, whereas with bosons that wasn't the case. Okay? So we said that there is, for fermions, the macroscopic for fermions there's, is, is, is one also, because they're also identical particles. So for the same reasoning, it, it, it is one. But what about the microscopic description? So we know that n is capital N is broken down into n sub one in, in micro in macro state one, n sub two in macro state two, n sub three in macro state three, the whole way up until we have n sub s particles in macro state s. And we know that inside each of these, where well, we have g sub one micro states here, g sub two, here we have g sub three micro states, and in general we have g sub s micro states for each of the macro states. So. And the question is, what do we do here? Well, let's let's look at it. Let's look at one. Let's look. Actually, I won't look at that one. Just for general, general or general. I can't even pronounce the word. Just to be general. How about that? We're going to look at the third macro state. Okay, of the third macro box. So we know that there is only one way of choosing it, choosing all those particles. So here is macro box or macro state number three. Macro. Three, where is where that for the multiplicity, the macroscopic multiplicity is equal to one. So inside it we have g sub three microstates. Okay, so there's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the uh, the g sub thir third one. And into it we're going to put in n sub three particles. So here's particle one, here's particle two, particle three, particle four, whatever. So let's look at it. We put in particle one. Well, particle one can go anywhere. He can go into any one of these states. Okay. So let's say for particle one, well, there are g sub um, for particle one. There are g sub three places he can go because we're talking about the third macro box. Oh, Grant, he's gone. He goes. Let's say he goes in here. Well, particle two comes along and he can't go into this box because that's what fermions aren't allowed to do. So he goes into one of the remaining boxes. So he goes into g sub 3 minus 1. So particle 2 has a choice of that many states. And the next one. So particle 3 does something similar. He can go into any of the remaining boxes. So particle 3, well, he has g sub 3 minus 2 choices. And the whole, this, the way, this goes the whole way down until we have, um, or, or, or this goes the whole way down, right? So we have g sub s minus n sub s. That's how many particles we have to take away. So what it looks like is we have let's say g sub we have g sub s we have g sub s minus one 
g sub s minus 2, the whole way down to g sub s minus n sub s. Is there a plus 1? There is not. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. But we'd like this to be a factorial. So the only way to, to make this a factorial is if we make this a factorial, which means we need to divide by g sub s minus n sub s factorial. And if we divide by g sub s minus n sub s factorial, the top can just be written as g sub s factorial. Okay, pretty straightforward. And finally, for the same reason as with classical particles, we can pick their three identical particles, but we can pick this one, then this one, then this one, this one, then this one, then this one, whatever. So once again, we have to divide by n sub s factorial in order to actually fully account for all the different ways of choosing the same state. So this is just for a single macro box. So to get all the macro boxes, we have to multiply like this, and we get multiplicity for fermions, like so. Okay, so I'm just going to rub out the rest up here. That is the multiplicity function for fermions. Pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also, actually, if you're in a good mood, you might uh, also click it out. Right, goodbye.